Hello and welcome to another episode of So What Do You Actually Do? Today I got the chance to sit down with Kaylee who works in Hawaii. Kaylee is a cytologist, otherwise known as a cell detective. She conducts tests on cell specimens in the lab in order to detect cancer and other abnormalities, such as papillary, thyroid, epithelial hearts, and metastatic melanoma. Please stay tuned till the end and don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Um, so if you don't mind sharing with us, where do you work and what does that company do? Is it more of like a hospital and you work in a clinic within the hospital or is yours like a clinic of its own that practices cytology? Yeah, the, the lab is a clinical lab and you have the processing lab and you have us screening and the doctors, but we are partnering and working for local hospitals. Uh, it's it's got like, it's a network of five hospitals. And so I love it because as a cytologist, you can also go on surgical procedures. You're not just screening slides all day, unless you want to, of course. But for my job, I get to do it all. And on certain days of the week, the surgeons at the neighboring hospitals will need our assistance to sit in on the surgery and kind of make slides on the site to tell them if they're in the right tumor or whatever they're looking for. So I really, I really like that part about my job at my location. So, yeah. And if I wanted to move to another location, it's great because uh, since we're corporate, you know, I can do that. That is really cool. I'm going to ask some questions on that part. That seems sure. uh, very intense. <laughs> yeah. Um, but before I get there, um, so you mentioned it's a corporate company, so a cor corporate lab. Uh, assisting local hospitals do you guys go in as like personnel to do that or do you take a portable laboratory with you to use your own equipment how does that work you're asking me that and I'm just like seeing the cart that I roll yeah so I take this little roller cart it's not that you know big but it'll fit a microscope on it and then I have a line of three stains and little Copenhagen jars and then um, I've got needles on there. I've got, you know, specimen, empty specimen, sterile cups. If I need to collect any kind of fluids for them to send in the lab, I've got like extra everything. I've got recs on, or paperwork on there that I fill out, copies of that in case I run out. And yeah, I'm going through the inventory checklist in my head like I'm at work. But yes, it's kind of a lab on wheels. And so yeah. it's pretty, pretty cool, pretty, what do you call that? Convenient. <laughs> Cool. So now the golden question. Um, so what do you actually do? My job is primarily to screen slides. And as of right now, the majority of my work is with pap smears. So on average, I look at about 50 slides, 60 slides a day. And so I try to get there at 630. And the first about hour or two of my day, I'm screening the non-gynecological specimens. So these specimens are going to be the things like when I go on those surgical procedures, we make everything, they collect fluids, and they send it back to the lab where it gets processed. And then I see it the next day and I look at it and then I send it to the pathologist to see what they finally um, think of it. So those specimens are kind of priority in terms of the, my timeline at work because they're heavier, they can be heavy cases and you're looking at a lot of, it could be any kind of cancer. So within the pap smears with the cervix, it's typically squamous cell carcinoma with HPV. So we kind of save those for the end of the day because it's one cancer we're looking for. And then the non-gens, they're any kind of cancer goes. So we get in early to do those and we try to get those to the pathologist by nine o'clock, 9 a.m. So that the pathologist has all day to kind of figure out, you know, what they're looking at. <laughs> and their work, they are doing things like ordering special stains to kind of rule out malignancies um, if there is a malignancy. So yeah, those specimens, typically the cutoff is nine. And then for the rest of my day, I'm screening pap smears uh, and then other stuff I'm doing besides screening pap smears uh, might look like fixing problems and so that's the first thing that came to mind and a lot of the problems will it depends on what kind of problem it is it could take up a lot of your time or it's just a phone call so that's kind of like the 
the time fillers in between my screening time. And then, yeah, other than that, just trying to take my health breaks, my 15 minute breaks. So that's pretty important. Um, so you did mention the work you do with a pathologist. Uh, can you uh, describe the difference between a cytologist and a pathologist briefly? Sure. A cytologist, we kind of call ourselves like the sidekick of the pathologist. And we're kind of weeding out the negative PAPs because we're, as a cytologist, when you're board certified and you pass your exam, you can sign out negative PAP smear cases. And that's the only thing you can sign out. <laughs> Other than that, everything else goes to the pathologist. Any abnormality, they get the final say. It's not cancer till they call it cancer. So um, you're just kind of there to hopefully steer them in the right direction if you remember things from school well enough. <laughs> yeah. So you guys are literally like the um, the lantern in the cave for them to walk in and find the gold <laughs> to some extent. Yeah. To, yeah hopefully <laughs> hopefully hopefully um so one thing you mentioned earlier and i think that is really cool uh you're in the room with a surgeon and they're giving you a specimen and are you like on a time clock time crunch where i need to find the whatever it is they're trying to examine and give them the results because the the patient is right now being operated on live absolutely <laughs> um <laughs> Yes, but also with that being said, you want to be meticulous with your work and take time. You don't ever want to panic. You don't want to mix things up. You don't want to mix, you know, specimens up or anything like that. So yes and no, you kind of have to master being in a high pace environment. And it comes for most people. Um, but a lot, there are those people that don't do well they have you know the worry and the anxiety and they just don't prefer that part but anyways within that room yes you're trying to make this slide enough and it also depends on the specimen collector so it depends on his team as well the operating team and so we're all trying to collect and hopefully not trip over anything and then yeah I'm trying to like make the stain right so that when I give it to the pathologist who is sitting right across from me at the microscope I make the slide, I stain it for him, give it to him, and he's kind of giving a preliminary um, screen to it, if you will. Mostly you're there for adequacy. Um, and if it happens to be that you see there's cancer, then you can tell them they're good, they don't need to collect anymore, they got it. Yes. The way you're describing it, I mean, you're probably having the cools because you've been doing this for some time, but for me hearing this, it's like no pressure, just... You know. <laughs> gotta be on like don't trip make sure you're putting everything <laughs> yeah be able to write and, and make slides at the same time you gotta have like five arms um so question uh, on the life work-life balance uh how would you describe that as a cytologist is it something that is uh, uh forgiving or is it very uh demanding <laughs> well it's mostly pretty forgiving. I think it depends on also how you manage your day. It depends on the volume of your lab, if they have a lot of PAPs that come in or if they're pretty light and if they are heavy on surgeries, because sometimes if you're doing surgeries all day, uh, my coworker, he was pulled in to do the surgeries and the scheduling at the hospital was terrible. So he ended up being there from 8 a.m. to like 6 p.m. And um, anyways, so you might have those days like any other job, but I find it pretty fair. I, I like it because it's a stable job. You go in, you kind of just, you typically have a load of work for the day, like 50 slides, do it and, you know, make your eight hours and go. <laughs> so I like that because it gives me the option to have stability in my schedule. Um, nothing like on call where I'm at. And so then I get to go and do my hobbies after work and my ex extracurricular stuff and kind of hang out with my dog and my family. Nice, nice. Um, one last question on the benefits. And this is something that you can share at your discretion. Um, how much is the pay range for a job uh, like a cyt uh, cytologist? And does that vary this, um, um, a lot as you progress into the field? It's near a three-figure salary. With that being said, I'm sorry, six-figure. 
if I said that right. Yeah. And so with that being said, my cost of living out here is pretty high. Um, and I think I'm finding if I'm saving very well, I'm using strategy financially that I can, you know, make good investments here and there and do whatever with my salary. Um, um, the very last question, um, what advice would, would, uh, Kaylee give to anyone who's interested in pursuing a career in, in cytology, whether that be someone who is in high school thinking going into college or someone that has already gone through a certain career path and they're thinking of career shifting into, uh, uh, cytology. Yeah. Um, I think getting, an ex I guess exposure to the lab that you want to go work at or actually just getting exposure to any of the environments you want to work at um, and if you haven't had one setting experience then maybe pursue that and see if it works out for you uh, whether it be in the hospital or just in the lab is if it is private or corporate and or if it's a travel job I think that exploring your opportunities is pretty important there um, and pretty much to stay on top of the literature because if you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> so yeah, be be interested in keeping up with what the ASCP articles and all that are pushing out there and maybe even go to the conferences that they offer around the world. Um, those are pretty interesting to go to, I hear. And even looking, it just look into the field. I didn't realize that there were volunteer opportunities you can do in places like Vietnam or Mexico and stuff. So, and if you want to travel and do stuff like that, that's another option to travel um, and volunteer. So, yeah. Thank you for sticking through till the end. I hope you enjoyed the world that's under the microscope. Also, if you are interested in more, check out Kaylee's socials in the bottom. Her Instagram is filled with more of these cells with very good descriptions. And last but not least, a sincere request to all those that watch our channel. Please leave comments in the bottom of how you feel about the channel so far, any feedback, any criticism. And if you know anyone who's interested to be interviewed or any career path that you want us to go and interview for, we will do that for you. I hope you have a great rest of your day and don't forget to like, subscribe and share.